Golden State Media Concepts Fantasy Football Podcast is your one-stop shop for fantasy football news and advice. Can't decide on who to draft on the first round? Going gaga on how to line up your team. Got you covered. Traditional leagues, dynasty leagues, PPR leagues, IDP leagues, IDP leagues, even daily fantasy football leagues. Join us as we break down all the questions of fantasy football. It's the Golden State Media Concepts Fantasy Football Podcast. What is up? Welcome to the GSMC Fantasy Football Podcast on a Thursday here. My name is Tom Doherty, your host. As always, this podcast is brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. This show, we're going to we're gonna break it up. for. Obviously, we have our normal four segments we usually do here on the GSMC Podcast. Um, this one, I think we're going to break up a few players every segment. Players I like, love, and hate. I mean, maybe I'll do like one or three, one or two or three of each every segment and kind of, you know, bounce around different guys that I've circled and guys that, I mean, I mean, th- th- these aren't guys that, I mean, obviously, oh, oh, we, we love Le'Veon Bell. We love Todd Gurley. We love, uh, I mean, uh, people love Russell Wilson. I just have a little bit of a, t- t- I try to pump the brakes a little bit. Enough fanboying, enough fangirling. This is real. We want them to score. I mean, we want them to score a lot of points for us. We want them to do well. And there's also players who I just like, no, I, I mean, like people, uh, I always, you've heard me talk about Doug Baldwin a lot on this show. And the fact that I'm like, not Doug Baldwin fan because yeah, his volume might be high PPR. Sure. Good. Because he's going to get a lot of catches. He's really the only, he's like literally the only receiver on that team. Uh, if he can get open, I would double cover him every time. I would just put a safety over the top and a nickel corner or a linebacker slide underneath with this with the corner helping out as well. So I mean, two guys underneath the guy on top. It's that's pretty hard to get a for the ball in there, even if you're Russell Wilson. So uh, Doug Baldwin could be the uh, guy who has a big year because he's the only option, or he could be a guy who gets lost out there in Seattle because he's the only guy you need to cover. And then the Russell Wilson will find some nobody receiver that they have because Jimmy Graham's gone. Paul Richardson's gone. Um, I don't even know who they're tied in. I mean, we, could, I, we, look, we looked at the Seattle Seahawks depth chart. Um, I just don't really know where else the, the, the defense is to worry about covering that uh, on the, when it comes to the, the offense at the for the Seattle Seahawks. I mean, looking at their depth chart here on uh, for the wide, rece- wide receiver. I mean, their wide receiver position is uh, kind of thin. Uh, yeah, so Tyler Lock they did sign Brandon Marshall. That's true. So that he that hopefully he can get through training camp all right. And I mean, that's might be somebody I had to put on the hate side of the, this conversation, uh, but we're going to break it up now. I'm going to pick one player for each of these uh, like, love and hate for each, uh, for each segment. And uh, we're going to go from there. So we're going to start with the like segment of it. So this is a guy that, this is a guy that I think this is a rookie by the way. So that's actually also some, this is something that we haven't seen. We haven't seen before a guy um, that I really like. Not quite love yet because he's a rookie. None of the rookies are going to be in the, love, in the love category yet because they haven't proven anything on the uh, on the NFL on a, on a gridiron yet. But uh, as far as like, um, I'm going to put Ronald Jones there. You guys have heard me talk about Ronald Jones a lot. He's going to be in Tampa Bay. He's going to be with Jameis Winston. I think he's going to be a guy who can come right in there and day week one make an impact because playing at USC, you're going to have a lot of, you're going to get that experience. You're going to have that pro style offense. You work with, you worked with Sam Darnold, who's now going to be an NFL quarterback. And then also now he gets to be with Jameis Winston, who not only is an athletic young quarterback, but he's a guy who will need some help. He's going to need a little, uh, a good running back to offset. He's going to need a good running game in general, to help him with play action, to help him get some easier throws. I mean, you saw what happened with Dak Prescott in Dallas when he had Ezekiel Elliott. 
he never had to deal with a linebacker sniffing under his coverage. I mean, under his, under his routes with the coverage, he had linebackers. They were creeping up around the back of those uh, the back of those linemen every single time, thinking that Zeke was going to get that ball in the middle, and they had a cheat. So every time he ran play action, he had a wide open. Uh, say a little slot receiver or a tight end right over the middle, ready to go. So if Jameis can get, if Ronald Jones can set the tone for that uh, Tampa Bay offense, um, you could obviously see a lot of points going that way. I think they're going to use him a lot because they want to be able to establish the run there in Tampa and get that play action. That's what. That's why I think J- Jameis has not really been able to get a footing. Well, he's had some good games, obviously, but he hasn't really been able to get a good uh, a good footing and a good streak of good games going in a row in his career because they've gotten too reliant on the pass and then become predictable. Um, I mean, they have Charles Sims. They had um, they had a, a, what was the guy's name? I always forget his name. Uh, he got suspended last year. I'll think of it in a second, but. Uh, it doesn't matter. They have Ronald Jones now, and I think he's a guy who I really like, and I think could be a fantasy guy, fantasy guy that you're not going to pick probably. I mean, we did those mock drafts, guys. We did those mock drafts, ladies and gentlemen. We know that there uh, sometimes, depending on where you are, is going to be a, a premium to pick some things. I mean, we saw Ronald Jones's name well before the seventh, eighth round. We usually run maybe the fourth, fifth, sixth round. We saw his name get picked uh, in this in this uh, mock draft. So. Don't be surprised to see him go early in the draft. He's, I mean, he's going to be a guy who's going to get a lot of touches there in Tampa, and he's definitely a player that I like. All right, for the, now the player that I love. There's a lot to choose from. I love a lot of players out there. Um, but the player I love, we're going to start off with the first segment, is going to be Michael Thomas from New, New Orleans. Uh, that's an easy pick for me. Uh, I've, I've liked him for a long time. He's young. He's got the size. He's got the gr- uh, grit. He's worked well with Drew Brees already at a young age in his young, in a, in a career. I mean, he's, this is what, it's going to be his third year in the, in the league, I think. He's already become a, uh, surefire number one receiver. I mean, the only thing is he, that maybe might, might throw a little red flag, a teeny little red flag in this, uh, in the, for this guy is the fact that, in New Orleans, they've kind of turned into a running game and defensive team. But when you have, when that, you still have to throw the ball, you still got the Hall of Fame quarterback. Uh, and uh, Sean Payton likes to get that vertical passing game going. And Michael Thomas is a guy who can really get behind that defense, get some long y- chunk plays, and also is a pretty. Um, He's pretty dangerous in the PPR game as well because he likes to run those little stop routes, can get get open on the outside, also can run, especially when you get the, the thing is a good running game can lead to a lot of open receivers in the play action game because that's all Drew Brees has to do is fake it to Kamara and uh, have a little in cutting route on a 10 yard in or 15 yard in route and the safeties are backed off, no linebacker underneath, boom, there's Michael Thomas. Wide open, 15 yards in route, and uh, that's a PPR too. So, I mean, that's also good. They run wide receiver screens to him. They have a lot. He's a big part of their offense, and he's going to get a lot of volume as well. So, I love, love, love Michael Thomas. I'll be, I mean, he's a guy I consider to be drafting in the first round. Uh, if I had a late first round pick uh, early between in a, in a snake draft, which is good, I would love a late first round pick this year because there's a lot of t- there's a lot of value at the end of that first round, and then you can also get top tier talent in the beginning of that first, second round because you have the back to back picks uh, with the snake draft. So you gotta like that if um, you are a fantasy owner in those kind of a, in that kind of scenario. But no, Michael Thomas in that offense cannot 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 stay in, say enough about him. Uh, I mean, he's a guy who I think is going to be. I mean, who, what, what? I mean, look at their depth chart. I mean, he, yeah, they have other options. It's not like, but the thing is, they have other options. They're going to be good decoys because it's not like it's in, um, like, like Green, like other crowded, crowded areas. We have Green Bay where okay, Aaron Rodgers like to throw, throw the ball around. You got John Allison and Randall Cobb and De- Devontae Adams. I love Devontae Adams. He's up, up there in all the rankings with Michael Thomas from the same. Same rankings, but uh, I think that there's the, the fact that I mean Drew Brees. Drew Brees will sp- spread the ball around too, but Kenny Stills is gone. Uh, who else is gone? The other, the other they they lost a couple different receivers. So I mean, looking at the Saints, the same step chart, and their receiving their, their receiver situation. Uh, I mean, it's Michael Thomas and Ted Ginn, and oh, they have Cameron Meredith, who's a nice like yeah. But those are good to be guys who are going to run in those deep routes. I love the fact that Ted Ginn is on this team too, because Ted Ginn is a speedster who's going to take the top off that defense and is going to let Michael Thomas just run wild underneath there with all those kind of underneath double move routes 
slant and goes, uh, stuff like that. So I think that's going to be really, really, really valuable for uh, for Michael Thomas and for the Saints. But I mean, because they're going to get, believe me, the running backs are going to get their due. Uh, I could throw Kamara on this list. I mean, that'd be kind of an obvious thing. Maybe we'll get to him at the end of the show. But uh, no, Michael Thomas is a guy who I would, if I, uh, the best pick, the best scenario for me would have, but to be to have the, like, if in, in a 10 man league, to have the ninth pick and get Michael Thomas ninth and then have the, what would that be? I'd have the twelfth pick. I'd have the twelfth pick, and then get like Shady McCoy or Jerick McKinnon in a PPR league. So you get two. You get two top tier guys. I mean, that's assuming everybody's gone. Maybe Melvin Gordon would be be not, wouldn't be a bad option either. Uh, we'll get to my other. Those, I mean, I think all those guys that just said might be on the show eventually too. We have a few more segments to get to. But uh, yeah, as far as my the guy that I, I mean, Michael Thomas, Michael Thomas, Michael Thomas, I can't say it enough. He's look for, I mean, he's top tier. That's easy. He's a top tier guy, but he's not the uh, the most flashy receiver you're going to see. And he's not a Julio. He's not a Odell Beckham who I actually like him better than Odell Beckham, but Odell Beckham's coming off an injury. Uh, Eli, always feels like he needs to force the ball over to him. Even when he's not open, we'll see how, uh, they how, how the Saquon Barkley effects will take away some, maybe some of his uh, opportunities, some of the targets if he saves his targets go down this year, or maybe he come. I don't know. He can be becoming more efficient, and you never know uh, with Saquon too. But you saw with Saquon, you saw with Michael Thomas last year. The running game will take away a little bit of your targets, but it'll, it will make you more efficient because uh, you'll be open more. But you'll you, the ball will be thrown to you a little bit less because the other guys are going to get their touches too. But uh, when you do get a chance to get the ball and it's, you're going to be uh, targeted, you're probably going to be way more open because they're going to be thinking the ball is going to, the, the, to those uh, quick little running backs back there. Um, so the same kind of thing in New York with uh, Odell Beckham. So I'm not saying don't pick him. Uh, he's not going to be on, and he's not going to be anywhere on the show where it's like love or hate because he's kind of in, dancing around the middle of all those things. Um, but Michael Thomas is, is surely on the show, and now we're going to get um, to the, the the player, the player that I hate <laughs> for this segment. Uh, who's going to be the player that I hate for this segment? I mean, I could say Doug Baldwin again, but I already picked on, I already I already picked on Doug Baldwin um, a bit too much. I mean, there there's there's a lot of guys out there, but um, I'm going to say the, the 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 one guy that I do hate fantasy wise. I don't love, I love him as a player. He's a great player, but it's for fantasy implications. I'm going to have to throw Russell. I have to put Russell Wilson out there because I know Russell's a great quarterback. I love Russell Wilson as a quarterback, probably already a Hall of Fame caliber quarterback, but he just does not have enough. There's not enough for him to do. He can't run the ball every time. You, the, if I were playing defense against him, I'd QB a spy with a, a spy, put a spy on him and put a nickel, run nickel every time. Let Richard Penny beat me. Let Richard Penny beat me. Don't let, don't let Frick, uh, don't let Russell Wilson beat me. Uh, nickel, nickel defense with a spy. A, a fast, a fast uh, linebacker in there, and an extra, and an extra uh, corner to cover Doug Baldwin. Basically, I'm just Russell Wilson this year. I think is, I mean, he's going to get his numbers probably. But I saw it last year. I saw it the year before. I even think that the uh, he just didn't. He he has his year. He'll have a day where oh, he runs for two touchdowns and forty yards, fifty yards rushing, which is great. Five more points there, and he have he'll go like fifteen for twenty five or like something like that from the passing game with a touchdown. So he'll have three touchdowns and uh, uh, some yards. So he'll get some good points. But I mean, looking right now, they have Brandon Marshall, Doug Baldwin, and Tyler Lockett. It's okay, Brandon will washed up there. You got a rookie running back. Your tight end is Nick Vanette called it, and I thought so. Um, and Ed Dixon. So I mean. Hmm. I don't. I, that's not nothing really that is sticking out to me at that point. So I mean, as much as I say, I don't hate Russell Wilson. He's a great guy, great player, great humanitarian, uh, great for this league. But fantasy wise, purely fantasy wise, I'm just not on Russell Wilson this year at all. Not at all. Not at all. Give me Carson Wentz. Give me Drew Brees. Give me Jimmy Garoppolo. Uh, it's not on Russell Wilson. He does not have enough weapons. Uh, he's going to get his offensive line is still not being figured out. They still he's going to be running for his life this year, I think. And he just can. Ha- he'll, I think I saw him have weeks last year where he had nine points, eight points because he didn't have anything to throw to. 
If he can't, if they, if you get, if he plays against a good secondary with a fast linebacker, then he's not going to be able to do anything because you can say you just run a spy on him, have a linebacker, but you just tethered to him, running behind, running behind the line of scrimmage, throw an extra cornerback in there with a nickel, and dare them to run the ball. Basically, if Rashard Penny, if Rashard Penny is good in the NFL and can actually get some holes with that offensive line. Uh, then, them, then they could be fine. They could sting some defenses with that running game. And that's why they were good with Marshawn Lynch because they were able to sting the defense with the running game, and he was able to throw the ball over the top with the play action passing game or in a bootleg. I've never seen Russell uh, so many uh, a guy be so wide open and so uh, clean pocket on a bootleg than Russell Wilson when he had Marshawn Lynch. So if they can get back to that with Rashard, Rashard Penny. Um, they could do something. They don't have Jermaine Curse anymore. They don't have Paul Richardson anymore. They don't have Jimmy Graham anymore. They don't have any of those guys. They have Doug Baldwin and Nick Vanette and uh, washed up Brandon Marshall. No offense, but he is. All right, that'll wrap it up for this segment. We'll come back and do three more guys, a guy I like, a guy I love, and a guy I hate. We'll do that every segment of the day here as we are going through the Fantasy Football Podcast, the GSMC Fantasy Football Podcast. I'll be right back. Are you looking for the very best NFL and college football podcast? Then check out the GSMC Football Podcast. Get the latest football news both on and off the field. From the NFL draft to trades to the rumor mill to the NFL combines. They got you covered. That's gsmcpodcast.com backslash football dash podcast. Get updates on college rivalries, game day insights, and much, much more. It's football talk the way you want it. This show eats, sleeps, and breathes football. Don't forget to like them on Facebook and follow them on Twitter. Visit gsmcpodcast.com for more info. All right, welcome back to GSMC Fantasy Football Podcast. Second segment of the day today here. Are three more guys to give you and to chat about here. As uh, we come back and go over, I mean, everybody busy watching your golf this weekend. I know there's probably some NFL players watching this golf this weekend as uh, they get through their mini camps, everything going right now uh, with these mini camps. In the NFL, so the, like I said, this is Father's Day weekend. The U.S. Open over in Long Island at uh, Shinnecock Hills going on right now. As um, I'm sure, I mean that's the, the cool thing about golf is the fact that uh, you have um, a lot. It's 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 fun to watch. It's it's on in the middle of the summer. You have all these players get involved in it. I'm sure if you go on social media, you'll probably see a lot of uh, NFL players uh, putting their two cents in. You see uh, in the off season, I know that right after the Super Bowl is the 18T Pebble Beach National Pro Am which is a really fun tournament down in uh, Monterey, the Monterey area at the Pebble Beach Golf Links, uh, which I've gone to a few times. And you see Aaron Rodgers and Larry Fitzgerald and Peyton Manning down there. And uh, I think even I can't even, there's probably more Alex Smith always plays. I'm trying to think of more of the, more of these uh, NFL guys that go down there and play. We'll probably see some more, um, more and more. Tom has Tom Brady. I think Tom Brady played a few a couple a few years ago, um, but obviously he's been in the Super Bowl. He's been kind of busy <laughs> around that time. Uh, I know I've seen Bill Belichick out there before after they win the Super Bowl. I think that was in 2017. He was out there after they won. Um, all right, back to the real football stuff. Obviously, we're in the middle of the summertime. We can talk about golf all day if we really want to, but uh, nope. Back to the fantasy stuff. P- players I like, I love, and I hate. Um, a player I like in this segment is going to be Juju, Sh- Juju Smith-Schuster, who, uh, yes, obviously lovely pick right there, Tom. Oh, so so he's such an easy pick. Yeah, he's great. He's an easy pick, but I mean, obviously, I think it's going to be kind of an interesting year for him coming in as a, uh, as now going to be the wide receiver two for the Steelers. I mean, he was the wide receiver two for a, probably a handful of games last year um, due to, I think, because A.B. Antonio Brown was hurt. Martavis Bryant was uh, suspended for some of that, some of that uh, season, but now he's, gonna, he's the legit wide receiver two for that team, obviously behind Antonio Brown. 
And Big Ben likes to spread the ball around, so I'm not. I would put, I'd put Juju as a love player, but he's um, not quite there yet. And also because he's not going to get the volume that is uh, required, but for a love player, because uh, and there's Antonio Brown, who is an easy player to pick for love. I'm, I'm going to leave that for a, a different show, probably. There's other too many guys out there, but uh, you know, no. Juju is a guy who I think is going to get, he's a, a baller. He's a gamer. I mean, you saw what he did to Vantazi Burfik, who I, th- what I think, I mean, yeah, he probably deserved a flag on the play, but why he was getting suspended for that is ridiculous. Um, that he, that was actually a good hit, a good football hit right in the guy's chest. And yeah, he maybe taunted him a little bit and stood over him. But compared to what Burfik did to Antonio Brown earlier in that game, uh, almost took his head off, putting his shoulder to his helmet. Uh, that's a different story versus, uh, Juju just kind of playing him. It wasn't even a blindside hit. He was right there. He just stood there and the guy ran into his shoulder. So, and you go look at the two uh, plays. And then also go look at the play that Gronk, that the, uh, go look at what Gronk did. Um, to that Bills player, the same. I think it was the same week. That whole week, I remember I watched side by side videos of those things. Like they both earn, they both deserve one game suspension for this. Well, Gronk definitely does, but Juju doesn't. Uh, and then Juju's obviously as a rookie, the numbers he put up as a rookie can, is are only impressive. I mean, oh, so impressive there. Uh, you got to give the guy credit. He's a great. I mean, great gamer. Great. Uh, great been able to get into a veteran team and this is not a Steelers team that's trying to up and come like a bunch of young guys all raw raw together. no this is a championship team well I mean not quite a championship team but this is a team that's uh, with a quarterback who's won Super Bowls obviously but on, and also ha- and also has a roster that is built to win Super Bowls have not been able to get there yet can't get <laughs> couldn't get past the Jaguars of it in a high scoring game last year it was kind of the defense uh, defensive issue there I mean when you when Big Ben puts up 40 points you think they can get a victory uh, with the Steelers known for their defense but last year obviously with the loss of Ryan Shazier um, we all uh, I mean the Steelers have been a great franchise when it comes to what they have done for him and um, turning his some of his salary into a signing bonus so he can get some of his salary now versus um, having to see if he if, even if he can come back um, from that injury I mean obviously he's gonna be trying and you saw the great uh, the great show that they did at the at the NFL draft having him walk across the stage to deliver the uh, Steelers first round pick that was amazing to see as well all right. Well, Juju, we all know Juju. We all know he's going to get touches. He's going to get his PPR. Um, I'm, and PPR definitely is a higher than, than regular. It's as, as most receivers go. But as for a guy who's behind the number one receiver in football, you got to like him. And you got to like the fact that they're going to double up AB a lot. And he's going to be roaming free out there uh, quite a bit. All right. Go into the players I love. Uh, this season, I love Christian McCaffrey. I'm so I have to say it. This season, I love Christian McCaffrey. Sophomore, another guy who's coming into a sophomore season. Um, the one thing about Juju I want to say really quick is that you have to be wary of a sophomore slump. I don't think it's going to happen because of his talent, because of the way that uh, Steelers' offense runs. Yeah, they're changing offensive coordinators, but I think they're going to pick up right where they left off. But going to McCaffrey, you could also be wary of a sophomore slump, but I just think that his talent is too transcendent. And he, there's, you can't go into a slump when you can get open like that, and you can't go into a slump when you're such a, when you're a mismatch like that, and you can't go into a slump when you're hard, that hard to tackle, and you can't go into a slump when you're that elusive. You can't because you're just not. You're you're too. You, he can do too many things. So if he's having a bad get, bad day running the ball from just from from the backfield, okay, then he's going to be doing something. Out, maybe caught a touch. He can catch a touchdown. Throw a screen to him. Throw a little over the middle uh, out route to him. I mean, they'll own the middle angle route to him. Throw an out route to him to the boundary. See if he can get away that way. He's just got the quickness and the speed to get away from a linebacker, from a safety. If he can get a mismatch, I mean, that's the thing. He's a mismatch every single play. Every single play, he's a mismatch. I mean, I honestly, he had a, a rookie season. I, I mean, I loved him coming out of college, watched many, 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 many of his college games at Stanford being out here in the West Coast. But he is a guy who actually surprised me even for somebody who had the highest, ex- one of some of the highest expectations for him going into this season, this last season. He put up some numbers and even in the playoffs uh, played very well. Uh, again, even in that loss to the Saints in that game, that was a high-scoring affair. There had a touchdown, longer touchdown run as well uh, for the uh, for the Panthers. And I think he's gonna. He's just so many ways he can get his hands on the football. Whether they run it to him, whether they do a little, they can run and play. They can run a triple option if they really wanted to. 
the pa- the Panthers could run a triple option, effectively triple option in that in, with, with that offense. You could have Cam w- run a sw- run a sweep, pitch it. You could do whatever you want, hand it off, pitch it. Doesn't matter. You can do you, with that. I mean, you can. I'd run play action angle route over the top. Make those linebackers just running back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. If he gets only chance that can, you can neutralize uh, Christian McCaffrey's with a really, really, really good, strong defensive line and fast linebackers, and not everybody has those guys. Any other mess match, if you, then you can match him up against the safety. You can have him run a seam route through the through from the backfield in a, in a play action uh, or in a shotgun formation, straight up the straight up the formation. So there's so many different ways to utilize them. Just love them. Love them, love them, love them. Pass catching running backs, love them. We'll probably talk about um, one or two more of them before the show's over for sure. But uh, I cannot say enough good things about Christian McCaffrey. And even coming into his second season, I feel like every single year he's going to get better and better and better. And uh, there's just, uh, I think it's the, the sky's the limit for, for him because, I mean, just it's uh, it's quite – it's quite easy for him to get open. It's just too easy. It's too easy for him to get open. Uh, it's too easy for him to uh, get away and break tackles and shred and shred uh, defenders and stuff like that. So um, I just think it, it's too it's too much to ask as far as um, as far as a defense. And I think he's just he's a fantasy nightmare. He's going to put up some serious points this year. All right. As far as a player, I hate. I have to. I don't like this. I have to. I kind of just threw it out there. I don't like picking players. I hate more like players. I think are not going to be have that great of a year this year. And um, a guy who actually had a pretty decent year last year, but I think it's just too crowded in the backfield. The whole Browns backfield is too crowded, anyways. Um, with Carlos Hyde, Nick Chubb, and Duke Johnson. So honestly, you could take. You could say any of them. But I'll say Duke Johnson because I think Carlos Hyde is actually going to get some touches, and then they also want to try the rookie. So. I think Duke Johnson is going to be the odd man out there in Cleveland. Uh, so I'll put him as my player to hate for this segment because, uh, I, yeah, I just think he's going to be the odd man out. He's not going to get enough time on the field. They're going to want to run the rookie out there to get him some touches uh, and get him get his feet wet in the NFL. Um, Nick Chubb, see what he can do. And then also Carlos Hyde, they signed him, what was that, $26 million three-year deal or something like that. So, I mean, they're, they're paying him uh, pretty good money. For a running back, I don't know. That might be completely wrong. I could check his. I could check how much he signed for, but um, they're paying him pretty good money to go out there and to perform. So I think they're going to give him some touches too. You got to kind of. That's kind of where you're like, oh, okay, well, we signed this guy to do something. We have to actually give him the football to do it with. Um, what was the deal that he got? From the Bears, uh, three years, fifteen million dollars. Okay, not quite twenty six. Because I knew it was a three year deal, but still, um, I mean, not th- five million a year, which is pretty good for a running back for a running back of his caliber. Uh, so I think that Duke Duke Johnson just is not. I mean, he had a nice little year last year. Honestly, Cleveland running backs have, usually do pretty good because of the fact that they have to end up carrying the load anyways for that team. The quarterbacks have a tendency to be issues. Obviously, we'll see what happens with uh, with Baker Mayfield. I think they're going to be relying on the running game to create uh, create ways for him to use play action to for his advantage, Baker, and to create easier throws for him. I mean, you saw what the Eagles did last year with Nick Foles and what the uh, Vikings did with Case Keenum, just kind of game managing them, moving them along. Same thing with Blake Bortles using Leonard Fournette to kind of offset that uh, passing game, get those uh, linebackers with their up on their up on their toes. Getting them leaning forward so you can create that void but, but right in between them and the safeties in the middle of the field. And also, the, the linebackers are usually in charge of the flat, too. So if you can run any kind of play where you have, a say, a, a play action, you have a running back running up to the out route, uh, you know, a little out route in the flat, and you have a, uh, the corner rack is cleared out by the – by the receiver and the running, the linebackers are up on the back on the line. You could just easily outrun that linebacker, be out on the flat really quickly, and then all of a sudden you're on the safety, fifteen yards on the ten yards on the field. So uh, if the the if you can get Baker in that situation where he's going to be able to throw the ball out on the on the, out in the flat, I think they're going to be throwing a lot to Carlos Hyde because he's the great pass catcher. He's a better pass catcher. He got a lot of passes last year for the Niners. 
but I think just Duke Johnson, he uh, he has to be the player I hate for this one. Uh, I mean that whole that whole Cleveland backfield, the fantasy wise, is uh, going to be tough because you just never know. I think Nick Chubb might be a, uh, the best pick, honestly, and maybe Carlos Hyde, Nick Chubb, because he's going to get probably more of the short yardage uh, carries uh, as the guy who really gets behind in, th- in between the tackles there. And to get in the in the end zone for those short yardage carries on the one yard line or whether they're down the goal line, and then also Carlos Hyde for PPR people wouldn't be a bad pick because I think he's going to get uh, a lot of passes out of the backfield on those checkdowns and uh, designed running back uh, plays from Baker Mayfield this season. All right, that'll wrap it up for this third the second segment. We'll come back with the third segment. We'll do three more three more players, and we'll do our talk uh, when we come back. So everybody, stay tuned. Check out the show that's built on the MMA. From the UFC to extreme cage fighting, they got the fights covered. Check out the GSMC MMA podcast. Get the latest news on past or upcoming fights. Join us as we talk to and about some of the biggest names in the MMA, past, present, and future. When it's the fight game, there's just one show to check out. GSMCpodcast.com backslash MMA dash podcast. Don't forget to like them on Facebook and follow them on Twitter. Visit G. GSMCpodcast.com for more info. All right, welcome back to GSMC Fantasy Football Podcast. On a Thursday here, the Thursday, the first day of the U.S. Open from Shinnecock Hills in Southampton, New York, Long on Long Island, the 100 and I think it's the 118th U.S. Open as uh, there are players out on the course right now. Tough out there. This is a windy, windy day. But this is a fantasy football show, Tom. Enough golf. Yeah, but it's June, guys. I can enjoy my golf. Okay, back to football. Players I like, love, and hate. hate. Segment three. Kirk Cousins. I like him. I like Kirk. I like Kirk Cousins. He might, He almost was a niner. He almost was a niner, which would have made him my quarterback. Unfortunately, um, no, I'm kidding. It would have been fine. I just like I, we, what we've seen from Jimmy Garoppolo is great. I'm not going to actually. We're not even going to go through, go into Jimmy Garoppolo on this show. Maybe next segment. Maybe I'll do a niner segment next time. I'll fanboy it one time. I know I don't fanboy it very much on the show at all, right, guys? Uh, uh, on the college football show either, uh, or the baseball show for the Giants. But nope, I don't do that. And uh, I might do it next segment for the first time. Um. Wow, there's some great golfers out there. I'm sorry, I just, there there are some great golfers out there. Uh, okay, back. Kirk Cousins though. Kirk Cousins is going to be on the Vikings. He's going to have three really good weapons to throw to uh, for receivers. One's a tight end, uh, but I mean Diggs, Thielen, Rudolph. Great. Not to mention, oh, you have Dalvin Cook and Latavius Murray. Great. That's like just extra. I mean, uh, he's going to be a guy who is, I mean, I would not be mad taking him like second to last round if he was available still. I would just sit and wait. Just wait. Uh, obviously, the longer you wait, then there's always a chance that somebody just snags him. But uh would not be a bad fantasy quarterback. He's put up some serious numbers in D.C. without much help. He has Now he has top-tier talent all around him. Uh, whether it's receiver, tight end, or running back. Um, he's got a great defense. He's going to have the ball a lot. So, I mean, the fact that I, mean, yeah, I think it was kind of a no-brainer for him to sign with the Vikings. Um, but I think he's going to be great in that, on that uh, on that team. It's not going to be not my love. He's a quarterback. Couldn't can't go love yet because quarterbacks are kind of a dime a dozen. You can I can say the same thing about Drew Brees. I can say the same thing about Jimmy Garoppolo. I can say the same thing about Carson Wentz. I can say the same thing about. Um, Aaron, well, Aaron Rodgers is 
Aaron Rodgers is a different animal. Aaron Rodgers honestly doesn't. I mean, if you look at the difference differential between the points, he doesn't really extend himself much further in fantasy. I mean, it's not like he's throwing three, four, five touchdowns a game every day, every week. It's not like that. It's kind of it's the NFL. It's so hard, and you still get hurt and stuff like that. So Aaron, Aaron, I honestly kind of comes back to the pack a little bit because of his injuries. But uh, yeah, this is a this is a quarterback in Kirk Cousins who I think is going to be oh, can only get better. It can only be better. What, what he what he did with Jamison Crowder and a always injured J- Jordan Reed, and when Jordan Reed wasn't was injured, it was Vernon Davis uh, that he was able to uh, run with along there. I mean, who else? Did they they. I mean, uh, uh, Deshaun Jackson gone. Pierre Garcon gone. Still was able to pull up points. I mean, he Chris him and Chris Thompson. And he turned Chris Thompson into a. Uh, a top tier fantasy player because he's just because of catching the ball in the backfield, but his throws out of the backfield are always seemingly on point. And uh, I mean, the fact that you have a Dalvin Cook who looks to be chomping at the bit after he uh, is missed all of last year with that injury. So I think it's all it's it's nothing but good good things probably. For, I mean, not probably, but likely uh, for Kirk Cousins and the Vikings because they have the roster. They do. They have the roster. They have the quarterback. They have the coach. They have the roster. I mean, uh, Coach Zimmer knows what he's doing. They, uh, yeah, they won that. They won win a game last year by the skin of their teeth, and then end up getting pounded in the next game. But imagine if Kirk Cousins was their quarterback in that game against the, the Eagles. Would you say he was the better quarterback? Because it was Nick Foles versus versus Case Keenum. If you put Kirk Cousins through Kirk Cousins into that game instead of Case Keenum, does he have the leg up against Nick Foles? Is that? Do you think he does a little better against that uh, Philly Philly defense? He's got a stronger arm. He can actually drive the field down the down the drive the ball down the field. So uh, yeah, I think the answer is yes to that one. Uh, yeah. So I mean, that's that's an obvious. That's a, that's a I mean, uh, it's not obvious. So I think because quarterbacks, like I said, are a diamond. Kind of sometimes can be kind of a diamond dozen. There's not much difference between, like I said, getting. Uh, Drew Brees or Carson Wentz or uh, a Kirk Cousins or Jimmy Garoppolo or even Aaron Rodgers sometimes. Aaron Rodgers doesn't put up 30 points a week. He just doesn't. He puts up like 25 to uh, 23, 25, 28. If he has a great week, he'll put up a 33 or 32. It depends on how his scoring is. I'm going off of my normal scoring for my leagues, but um, I mean, everything has has tweaked a little bit differently. So so you got quarterbacks. Aaron can never find themselves usually in the love category. Um <laughs> much as far as the love category for this segment though it's gonna be travis kelsey easy pickings i think he's the number one tight end of the league rob gronkowski's there yeah i know but he's always he's hurt the patriots can win without him um he's shown that yeah he's a great addition for tom Brady to have he's a great weapon to have but he can get he's vulnerable injury prone um and isn't really that necessary on that team. they can still win without him i mean yeah he puts up points i mean that's a fantasy wise it doesn't really matter about the wins and losses of the team but uh, he needs to be on the field. You need the guy on the field to be able to win some fo- win some fantasy matchups. And uh, if he's on the field, then uh, you're not going to be able to do that. Travis Kelsey has had also some not as many, not as many injury issues. I think he was he had a concussion, right? That was about it. Oh uh, yeah, Gronk Scott ha- has had some elbow issues. Uh, he's had shoulder issues. So I mean, it's more physical stuff that can be lingering injuries versus Travis Kelsey. Yeah, it's, concussions are no joke. Don't get me wrong; they are no joke. But uh, I think he's more uh, prepared to have a. I mean, Gronk's been talking about retirement for the last two years. Kel- Travis Kelsey has no, uh, so no signs of slowing down. And and I think with uh, the quarterback that he's going to have this season, a young guy with a rocket arm, and uh, to have a six, what is he, six five, two two forty, um, that kind of target to throw to is going to be only helpful for. Uh, for a young Patrick Mahomes, and uh, to, yeah, to be able to see that guy, that big eighty-seven run, running on the field, just sling it to him every time, buddy. I mean, I feel like those they're gonna whoever's whoever's playing safety against against the Chiefs this year, look out because uh, you got speed all over the place. You got a guy who throws a uh, can throw a deep ball very well. I mean, you can have a he can have that tight end. My if I were the Chiefs, my favorite play would have Tyree Kill. Running off those safeties deep with a deep ball, and then having Travis Kelsey go right down the seam with a a seam route right up right up the hash marks. So I mean that's almost uncoverable. And if you can get Patrick Mahomes to throw that ball, that back shoulder pass right to uh, Travis Kelsey, then that can that's only that's only helpful there. So I mean uh, if you are the Chiefs and you are a 
Travis Kelsey fan, I think you're going to be just like me. Like that's no joke. That's not. That's a no brainer. Uh, yeah, he might be right now ranked up behind Gronk because Gronk is just. Yeah, Gronk's put up some serious numbers in his career. Gronk has records. Gronk has the pedigree, uh, but Gronk also has injury issues and can be kind of prone uh, to his injuries. So, I mean, uh, whether whether it's a whether it's something that could happen this year, we don't know. I don't want to speculate anything, but I mean, the guys are already talking about retirement and going and being a WWE star or going and be in movies or what have you. Um, yeah, I don't think Travis Kelsey's going that way anytime soon because I mean. It's not that it's it's just he he fits so well in that offense. It's just so it's so he's going to get so many touches. He's going to get so many touches. He's going to fit so well in that offense. PPR machine is a red zone nightmare. I mean, um, it's just not it's not fair sometimes for uh, for offenses because I mean for defenses because he is so uh, he is so dangerous there in those short in those short areas you basically he's kind of i think he's gonna turn into the next gronk i don't know i'm not gonna say the patrick mahomes has the accuracy that tom brady has because uh not very many people do at all (laughs) but um i definitely uh, have to pick a, a point at travis kelsey as somebody that i mean i would think about drafting before before Rob Gronkowski, because I think this on that team, he's going to be such a weapon, such a vital part of that team that uh, you can't really go wrong. You can't really go wrong at all with uh, with Travis Kelsey, as he's going to be somebody. I mean, just like I said, red zone threat, PPR threat. Uh, it's going to be only a help for his rookie quarterback. Big, strong target. I mean, guy's got a good arm, so he can get the ball, drive the ball down the field in the tight windows, which are uh, usually going to be those over the middle passes for your tight ends. Like I said, the seam routes, little angle routes, little just button hooks right in the middle, right in front of that uh, receipt or linebacker. Just throw it right, hit me right, hit me right in the numbers. You know, that's all you got to do is um, is uh, hit, him right, hit him right in the numbers there, and uh, he'll be just fine. All right, getting to the player that I that I hate for this season. I, I don't know, I don't like that word, but I do uh, not. Just guys, I think are going to have either a down year or not going to really jump off the page this year. And I think that's going to be Marshawn Lynch. Even though the Raiders, he's kind of I mean, unfortunately he's like the only guy for the Raiders. Maybe you'll get lucky and he'll get some short yardage opportunities. But I thought last year was going to be like a little was going to be like a little experiment year for him. Just go to Oakland and hang out and be at home and play with the Raiders and do whatever. And now he's back. So I just, I don't know what his plan is as far as uh, whether how engaged he's going to be this year, how much, I mean, running backs get beat up. I mean, you get beat up every play. I mean, mean, he's been a guy who was beast mode. He was a guy who was grounding and pounding through, uh, through players and, and through the line of scrimmage. I mean, he's, uh, does he have that anymore? Is he going to still do that? I mean, I don't know what, uh, what his plan is. For this season, I feel like it's always a question mark to see how engaged he's going to be and how much uh, to how much effort he wants to actually give out on his runs. So I would definitely stay away from him fantasy wise. There's just too many running backs uh, out there who are going to be very good, and I think that this year there it's just we're going to see a new crop of guys. We're going to see a new crop of pass catching guys. He's going to kind of go away from these re- bruisers. We're going to see a lot more pass. Uh, when we've already seen that kind of the, the the game go back to that West Coast passing game where you're seeing a lot of. Um, you're seeing a lot of receivers and running backs catch balls in the short short yardage and then run with the ball after, which is great. Getting kind of mismatches, getting the defense on a, a misdirection and plays like that. I love the play, play action passes where you have the running backs cross each other in the two back sets. Um, the Raiders aren't really going to do that. They're going to run. They're going to run a pro style offense. They're going to have Kirk uh, Derek Carr. He's got new weapons on the outside with Jordy Nelson and Martavis Bryant. I just going to take away. Uh, Take away chances for Marshawn Lynch. The only thing Marshawn, I think, would be a chance, be a chance to actually be valuable is in the short yardage on the goal line, and that's a specialized position, obviously, where they're going to be giving it to him, trying to punch it in the end zone. But when you have Marshawn Lynch back there, he's not the Marshawn Lynch you saw in the Super Bowl anymore. Um, they didn't get that. They did not get the ball in that position. Obviously, we know what happened with the the interception by Malcolm Butler, but. If you are a team that has Marshawn Lynch and you're on the one yard line, you think that, and you, he's back there, and the offensive line, the defensive line is like they're going to run it right at us. And that if your offensive line is ready, then he can get punched pretty easily, uh, or they, they do a, to run a hard play action and boot it with 
Derek Carr, which is exactly what I would do. Um, so, yeah, stay away. I would stay away from Marshall Lynch. I don't think I'm really. Pre- I'm kind of preaching to the choir here. He's kind of a tired, uh, tired player right now. There's just too much talent at that position uh, to uh, get it, and especially with the rookies we have this year. I mean, there's three, four, five, five solid rookie running backs, maybe even six. If you think about uh, Royce Freeman as well, so I mean Saquon Barkley, Carry On Johnson, Nick Chubb, Ronald Jones, um, Royce Freeman. I think I'm forgetting one here too. Oh, Sony Michelle are all draftable rookie running backs. That's five. And that's five guys, six guys uh, that I would probably would draft before Marshawn Lynch. All right, that'll wrap it up for this uh, third segment. We'll come back with the final segment of the day today here. Um, then we'll come back with three more guys that I love, like, love, and hate, and we'll wrap it up for the show today and then go into the weekend, and you guys can enjoy your golf. All right, we'll be right back with that. Check out the show built around the women of MMA. From the UFC to the extreme cage fighting, we got the fights covered. Listen. It's the Golden State Media Concepts Women's MMA Podcast. The latest news of upcoming fights, discussions of previous matches. Join us as we talk to and about the biggest names in women's mixed martial arts. Past, present, and future. When it's the women's fight game, you know where to listen to. The Golden State Media Concepts Women's MMA Podcast. All right, welcome back to SMC Fantasy Football Podcast on a Thursday here. We're going to finish up the show with um, my chance to fanboy for just a little bit here. I know I'm not trying not to be a homer, but we don't want to... Um, I don't really want to go negative to end the show, so we're not going to start, We're not going to do a hate one at the end of this. We're going to do three 49er players that I think are going to have good years this year and uh, that you should think about picking on your fantasy team. The first one is going to be Jimmy Garoppolo. Obviously, Jimmy... Um, has been the talk of the town in that those parts uh, for a while. And uh, it could be the talk of the country. I mean, I don't know, especially during that trade that was made with the Patriots, but he came in, played those five games at the, at the end of the year last year, won them all, which is nice. Uh, we'll see what he does. Obviously, we've always, we've also seen all the talk and chatter. Oh, he shredded the Patriots uh, defense in practice, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, okay. I want to I want to see him play a full season. Believe me, I'm not like, Jimmy's going to be great. Jimmy's going to be great. I'm not, not that kind of Niner fan. I'm a very skeptical, um, uh, optimistically, optimistic Niner fan, but I'm also not. A re- I'm also kind of a realist. I'm like, okay, let's show me and see what happens. I'll go week by week with you. I'm not going to make expectations because when, when the expectations get really high, then you have a tendency to not them for them not to be met <laughs> and then you get let down and things like that we don't really want those things we want positivity so we keep our expectations where they should be and then uh, if they get exceeded then we can be happy then and fantasy wise i mean uh it's not that it's not too hard to get excited about uh, jimmy Garoppolo this season i mean he, he could use a big weapon on the outside i think they're going to try and fix that next year in the off season uh, as far as getting a big receiver or, or something for him i think george kittle is going to be a nice touch, a nice uh, weapon for him to use could be a sleeper uh, we could talk about uh, in the next show next week george kittle being a sleeper tight end if you I wouldn't draft him probably, but I would definitely think about picking him up in waivers if I ever have an issue with tight ends or if I have an issue, a tight end go on my go on a bye week or something like that. So uh, you can think about using him then because he he's going to be the number one tight end in, in there. And uh, Jimmy G loves to fit those ball, t- balls into those spots over the middle uh, to his tight end, the bigger targets over the middle there too. So, I mean, Kendall got in the end zone a few times last year as well. So you got to be like that if you – if you're looking for a tight end there uh, on the on the on the low low end of the tight ends, at least uh, maybe snag snag him at the end of the draft. Uh, as far as 
it goes with receivers. I think what he's going to, for catching the ball, his biggest weapon, I think, is, is going to be Jarek McKinnon. And we're going to talk about him in just a minute here. So I'll, I'll, I'll leave it at that. But Jarek McKinnon will be his biggest weapon as far as well as, as uh, Matt Breida. Matt Breida, I mean, he, if you, for those who haven't heard of him, go look him up. Go look up some of his highlights from last year. Look at his speed. Look at the acceleration from the point of the attack, the mesh point there. Um, if they want to run those sprint options, they want to do two back sets where they have those play action that the running back kind of cross each other in the backfield and he'll have opt- he'll have choices on whether he which flat he wants to throw to really testing the speed of the defense side to side uh, is going to be a big key for Jimmy Grapple and the Niners here today and obviously on the receiver receiver side he's got some interesting receivers he's got Marquise Goodwin back on that deal that he he earned last season who's a absolute speed demon not only is he uh, good in traffic catching the ball uh, in the short yardage situations, he also can take the top off the defense and let the more veteran guy who hasn't who missed last year. He wasn't there for the Jimmy G- Jimmy Garoppolo Palooza last year at the end of the season. Uh, that's Pierre Garcon. He was hurt and he's back now, fully healthy, ready to go. I mean, veteran uh, presence in that uh, receiving core for the Niners, and he he could be a guy who could run right underneath those routes. I mean, if anything. If I, if I could put a coach on this list and this love hate like love hate, I'd put Kyle Shanahan because you saw what he did with Matt Ryan, turned Matt Ryan into an MVP type quarterback. Obviously, he had Julio Jones and Muhammad Sanu over there. He doesn't have that in San Francisco, but he has similar running backs where he has uh, a guy like Devonta Freeman who can be, who uh, I mean he's more a little beefier, but more with the running game. But Jeff McKinnon can be something like that, maybe Brita, and then uh, obviously having like Tevin Coleman, which you saw, which is exactly what Jer- Jerick McKinnon is. Um, I mean, you have maybe a little more speed com- combined with uh, Coleman. Uh, I mean, with uh, Brita and McKinnon versus Coleman and Freeman, but uh, it doesn't matter. I think with the, with the way he runs those route combinations, like I was talking about with the, with the receivers, you could see a lot of route combinations where you see Goodwin and Garcon on the same side of the field with Goodwin in the slot running more of a long uh, running route at the safety, taking that safety out of the play, and having Garcon go a one-on-one against that cornerback and being able to uh, get in those soft spots in the zone or whatever they're running on the defense in the uh, right at the numbers in those intermediate routes that Jimmy G is so accurate at. So uh, got to love Jimmy G. Got to love him. Uh, got to wait and see, obviously, if he can keep keep it going. Last year, obviously, I mean, last year he beat the Titans. They weren't out of. They were in the. They're going. They were headed to the playoffs. They were not resting anybody because they were still fighting for a playoff spot and playoff uh, seating. Same with the Jaguars. Beat the Jaguars in a shootout. Actually, the the vaunted Jaguars defense that didn't that had everybody out there. Jalen Ramsey was out there. Telvin Smith was out there. Um, everybody was out there. Gibson was out there. Uh, Boy, I mean, uh, what's the their other uh, the other cornerback they have? I can't remember what his name is, but I'll think of it. Um, oh, AJ Boye. There you go. Uh, he was out there. They had everybody was out there, uh, uh, and they were fighting again, also for a seating in the in the AFC playoffs. So in the Niners and Jimmy G beat him. So I mean, we'll see if he can do it next year. I think the schedule next year is going to be interesting, um, especially their home games. Their home games are not uh, not too t- not too tough. As far as my other guy, the love, I'm going to do double. We're going to go love, double love here because, uh, or maybe double like. We'll do like, like, then love because like is going to be Matt Breida. I mean, I've already said the two next two guys, Matt Breida and Jared McKinnon. The backfield for the Niners this year is going to be one of the better ones we've seen and the most probably the most dynamic ones we've seen in a long time. Obviously, he used to be the Frank Gore show. Then they drafted Carlos Hyde, which ended up being the uh, uh, a running back too early from Ohio State. You missed, obviously, you couldn't, uh, couldn't get Ezekiel, Ezekiel Elliott. Um, but uh, he is, well, I think the Niners did have, they did have a pick before him, but it doesn't matter. Um Zico Elliott is gone in Dallas now, but they got they had Carlos Hyde. That's about it. They had Frank Gore, who is a I think uh, is Frank Gore a Hall of Famer. That's a whole that's a whole different question. Uh, very close to being a Hall of Famer, record breaking running back for the Niners. Um, but uh, having this this kind of core in the backfield, having a a Matt Breida who was there last year 
in that uh, Kyle Shanahan offense, so he knows it down pat. You're going to get uh, Jerick McKinnon in there, who was on the Vikings team last year where he was behind uh, Latavius Murray. Now he would have been the third guy behind Murray and Cook. Now he gets So he gets out of there, becomes the number one guy in for the Niners, and I think that's just going to – it's going to vault him, vault him to uh, becoming a uh, maybe even a top 10 running back in the league. I mean, that's the talent I see. You, see, you can see from this guy. You saw some – go look up his highlights from the Vikings. I mean, this is a big game. Uh, a big uh, chunk play back where he can get out in the, in the space. He's fast. He's elusive. Uh, I mean, he's everything. So uh, whether it is going to be more Brita off these handoffs, more McKinnon off of the play action, throwing it out of the backfield. So whether they're going to do both. So, I mean, the one thing that I am a little concerned about is maybe the, the, the beefiness and maybe injury prone uh, aspect of these two guys not having as much size to get in those um, power offense. But I mean, that's what the Niners were. They were more of a ground and pound offense. Now they're going to get into more of a dink and dunk West Coast style offense, which is what we saw for the, from the Patriots, what we saw from the, from the Eagles. And uh, uh, a bunch of other teams who made the playoffs last year as well. So uh, I think they've, the fact that they've gotten their front seven really solid, solidified looks like that uh, uh, the linebacker uh, Ruben Foster is going to be fine. He got his legal; he's getting his legal situation figured out. Um, I think as far as the Niners go, but as far as fantasy wise, the whole obviously a whole the, the team goes into everything. It's all encompassed into one thing: the team, the quarterback, the receivers, the running backs, everything, tight ends. I told you talked about George Kittle a little bit, talked about the receivers a little bit. Um, I like there's a couple other guys: Aldrick Robinson, also Kendrick Bourne, also are two guys to think about on the Niners um, as well. But as far as fantasy, Jarek McKinnon is a top. I think he's a top 10 running back now, honestly, fantasy-wise, just based off potential and based off of that system that he's in, which I usually don't like speculating that far out, but it's it's, it's such a perfect situation for him with that coach. I think it's going to be tough to go wrong. And then also uh, Matt Breida with his speed and his experience already now being a year in that system is going to help. I don't think he's going to be that. I mean, he's a sleeper guy. He's a guy you're not going to see on the draft boards very high. He's not gonna, a guy you're going to see um, probably getting picked maybe at all in a lot of different drafts. But if you want to be able to sneak him and then uh, end up, oh, wait, Matt Breida had 20 points today. Where is he on the draft? Where is he on the waiver wire? Oh, wait, somebody has him already because they drafted him. So you can be that guy that drafted him. I would not be surprised if that happens because he's going to be a guy that's really going to be a change of pace. Uh, speed back uh, not really much out of the backfield as much as going to be for McKinnon it's going to be more of him getting the ball in those uh, sprint options whether it's going to I mean uh, more the uh, off tackle plays uh, or you know less power but more speed on the outside running game uh, getting those uh, quick line because that's what the Niners have they have quick guards now they got the new guard from uh, they got a new center from the Giants uh, they have the new offensive lineman they drafted from Notre Dame so uh, they have to, they have they have some youth they have some athleticism on the offensive line too. So that all goes into it. Offensive lines, don't sleep on your offensive lines. If you're a fan of any NFL team, you should learn your linemen, know your linemen, and love your linemen because they make or break everything. And also love your linemen of your running back that you have for your fantasy team <laughs> because they are going to make or break. Uh, they can be a big di- difference on whether your 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 running backs going to have a great year or an average year or a bad year because they make the holes for them. Obviously, there's talented guys out there that can kind of make create their own space and stuff. But uh, as far as a as far as it goes with the with fantasy, you should definitely take uh, you the line the the uh, quality of the offensive line into a kit into account when you're drafting running backs too. So uh, def- definitely something to think about. As far as the Niners, there's three guys on that team who I think are extremely draftable, maybe even four. Uh, with Goodwin, I picked up Goodwin last year, right before that big stretch of games he had with uh, with with uh, Jimmy Garoppolo, and got some good production out of him. So, uh, not not definitely not a shabby thing to have on your bench. A late round pick, I think Marquise Goodwin is something to think about as well. Uh, but as far as like, love, it into a hate for the segment because it's the last segment. I want to finish off with a hate. But as far as like, <laughs> like, like, and love, two likes and a love will go. Uh, I like Jimmy Garoppolo. I like Matt Breed. I love Jerick McKinnon. I love Jerick McKinnon in that in that offense. I love Jerick McKinnon with uh, Kyle Shanahan. I love what he did with Tevin Coleman. I hope he can do it. I hope he can do with Tevin Col- what he did with Tevin Coleman with with, with Matt with Matt Breida, and then do what he did with Devontae Freeman with Jerick McKinnon. 
that's what I want. So uh, if McKinnon maybe needs a beef up a little bit, or if he can if he can show that he can get between the tackles and actually run uh, for get some production as well between the tackles, kind of you know because you got to do a change of pace. You can't can't get predictable. You got to be able to prove that you can do everything at least decently and uh, keep that defense honest. Uh, that's going to be Jerick McKinnon's job right there. I mean, maybe a little breed as well, but with that. With that uh, way that Mikhail Shanahan sets out, sets out that offense, I think that they are uh, well on their way to doing just that. All right. End of the show today as we have finished up. Uh, we did do a bunch of stuff. Talked about um, a handful of players here on the show. Players I like, players I love, players I hate. <laughs> I don't say hates. I said a strong word. It's players more to stay away from red flags. So many red flags at fantasy wise. But uh, did a kind of bounce around. Did a running. Did, a, did some receivers. Did some. Did a tight end, did a running back, did a quarterback, so we did everything. I mean, didn't do a defense, sorry. Uh-huh. <laughs> defenses. De- I mean, I could rank my. De- I love my. De- I love the defenses. Honestly, defenses are fun, especially when you, got, uh, you want a defense that has a lot of turnovers. Jacksonville, obviously, is up there. Minnesota. I love the Saints defense. I love the Chargers defense. Chargers defense. Go look at their roster, and uh, tell me that the, their defense is is uh, is not top five. So, uh, definitely take that into account as well. All right, that'll wrap it up for today. We'll be back on uh, Tuesday, next Tuesday, for another edition of the GSMC Fantasy Football Podcast. Um, and uh, if you are also football fans, we do a college football show Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays. If you're a baseball fan, we also do a baseball show before that. Um, if you're a golf fan, everybody, the, the U.S. Open is in uh, full swing right now. Round one is on Fox right now, FS1. So everybody go. Oh, over the weekend. Obviously, this is a podcast being recorded. It's not live, but it is on uh, over this weekend, uh, Father's Day weekend. Everybody also wish a happy Father's Day to our fathers out there as well. We'll be back tomorrow. Uh, I'll be back tomorrow with a GSMC baseball podcast, GSMC fantasy football uh, football podcast, the college football edition tomorrow. And then Tuesday, we'll be back with another fantasy football podcast. So everybody, uh, have a good weekend. Happy Father's Day, and we'll see you Tuesday. Bye. You've been listening to the Golden State Media Concepts Fantasy Football Podcast, part of the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. You can find this show and others like it at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Download our podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Just type in GSMC to find all the shows from the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network from movies to music from sports to entertainment and even weird news you can also follow us on twitter and on facebook thank you and we hope you have enjoyed today's program